I'm Eleanor Stocks, E-L-E-A-N-O-R-S-T-O-C-K-S. I'm president of the Greater Dayton African American Chamber of Commerce. The chamber was formed in year 2000, uh, in late November of that year, and it was formed because we believe there was a need to encourage uh, and to grow more African American businesses within the Dayton area. And it was launched at the Dayton Art Institute with over 200 people that showed up for that launch, all embracing the concepts of growing and expanding African American businesses and capitalizing on our purchasing power, which was over $600 million. We would also like to be able to influence um, banks and financial institutions to take risk where they have not taken the kind of risk that's needed to sustain our businesses. So we'd like to see more of that take place. We would like to see uh, a growth of at least 100 businesses that can stay in business for at least four years. Most businesses are out of business within three years. And those are not just our statistics, but those are statistics of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. So we know that the longer you're able to survive in business, if you go past three years and you make it to five years, and there also is a drop after the fifth year. We need to have the kind of businesses that my mom and folks in our community have. Uh, I can name a number of them now that are still standing, like the funeral business and those kinds of businesses where early families started them and they have been sustained or they have been bought by other companies because of their credibility, their wealth, and their command. Well, I tell you, one reason they should join, because when I got started in business, taking over my mother's business, I joined organizations, the National Business League, because that was a group that brings business people together. And if you're going to be involved and engaged in any kind of business or industry, you need to get associated with those entities and organizations. With us, we bring networking, we bring advocacy, we bring a buyer shopper's guide, which no one has ever put that out with black businesses, a five color uh, publication that was distributed in Kroger's throughout this area. We uh, do plastic discount cards, where if you're a chamber member, there's gonna be a discount for you if you shop with that person. Uh, and also resources. We, I get calls all the time from folks looking for African Americans in different areas, large majority companies. So you really need to be close to an entity that receives a lot of information. Again, we need to be able to disseminate that information. We need to be strong enough with memberships and support from churches, schools, whoever, so that we can make sure we are working together as a team to make things happen. Jolene Nolan Norman, and I am the CEO publisher of Joe Magazine. But one of the things I really wanted to do was because I was a booking agent, and I wanted to have the artists that I booked a, play, a platform for, for them to be seen. And so I've written a novel, a short novel before, and I said, I can do a magazine, and, and we can call it Joe. One of the creative directors, G. Scott Jones, said, let's call it Joe, and so we did. And we started looking for jazz artists, and um, actors, just different celebrities. And that's how we actually got started with the Joe Magazine. There's it been some challenges. One of the challenges would say capital, you know, and it's been difficult sometimes trying to get those. The first year, we, we were just ambitious. The other thing I would say is just keeping um, things to rolling so people would know that we are, um, what a word I would say, just show that we are, have some stick to it this, so they would want to buy our magazines and also do advertisement with us. Well, in the publishing industry, I know one of the traits you would have to have is good writing skills, and uh, good skills would be able to talk with people. For me, I would say a good trait would be a people person, to be able to get along, and once you are able to talk with people, and you can get more things done. 
if you, I would say that when you're starting something, starting a business, you really, you're going to get some help, but you're going to have to really dig in it yourself and just um, don't let anything turn you around, just stick, stick with it. One of the things I would say with the community about Joe Magazine, um, one, Joe Magazine is a place where you can get down to earth soul on paper. Joe Magazine highlights everyday heroes in the community. And so we're always looking to find out when people are doing great things in the community so we can highlight them. I'm a big believer in the power of we. We got each other and that's a lie. We can tackle the tough challenges we face and build community through service and volunteering. We got It's time for you to raise your hand. Go to serve.gov and get involved in something you believe in. How will you raise your hand when they call your name? Are you with me? We weren't born. Hello, my name is Michael Wright of Wright and Schulte. I am a native Daytonian. I've been practicing in the Dayton area for approximately 16 years. I think I've always wanted to be a lawyer. I mean, I enjoy helping people. One of the great challenges of the law, of this profession, is not being able to help everyone you come in contact um, with. Even to this day it's difficult when you have a person that comes in that has an issue that you can't necessarily help them with. So I, I am very passionate about helping to balance the scales because again a result that could be life-changing for a person can be based on whether or not they have a competent lawyer or have a lawyer at all. I mean, so. As you're learning and as you're growing as a lawyer, you're also learning and growing as a business person. So just because you're a great lawyer doesn't make you necessarily a good business person. Just because you're a great business person doesn't make you a good lawyer. So over the years, I think I've been able to kind of mesh the two together and whereas I think I have a, a thriving business and I think that we are doing very good legal work and I think the business is doing well as a result of the legal work that we do for people. I was very determined, very persistent and very eager to do a good job for people so looking back and looking now I think that because of the support system I had with my family, with friends, with people that have invested in me. I think that this is just a natural result of me doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. I open my practice here, I plan to stay here, and I think that Dayton has a bright future. <music> feed these precious orphans. Show them that someone cares. Donate now at foodfororphans.org. Hi, my name is Anthony Van Noy. I'm a trial lawyer here in the city of Dayton. Uh, my practice emphasis is in the area of criminal defense, uh, family law, and personal injury. My inspiration uh, to become an attorney comes from two places. One was my mother. Uh, my mother seemed to uh, always encourage me to be the very best. Another impetus to me becoming an attorney, I think, was a high school uh, government teacher who seemed to challenge uh, everyone uh, in his class and would challenge you to know the answer. You know, as an a African-American uh, male, I, I didn't see uh, many examples of uh, lawyers. Uh, my family, I'm, I'm really a first-generation professional, first-generation uh, college graduate in my family, and even an extended family. So I think that was a challenge, not having the people that I knew 
uh, to kind of point me in the right direction. Uh, talking to juries is what I enjoy the most, and I think that probably the most important quality you can have as a trial lawyer is enthusiasm, as well as the ability to adjust. And uh, I think the additional adjust. obstacle uh, that you face, not having people who you know and people in your family that speak the language of the law is just that. There's a barrier. It's a language barrier. I'm a product of, of great mentors. Uh, high school, college, uh, law school, there have been people who have poured into my life. They've shared their nuggets of wisdom and I've tried to apply them to my life and tried to become the very best attorney, professional, husband, father, friend that I can be. I strive each day to be the very best person that I can be so that I can help make this world, our community, just a little bit better. Thanks. I want to be a pediatrician. Uh, I was hoping to become a chef someday. As long as there's somebody behind you, pushing you and supporting you, then you feel that you always have the strength to keep going. Each of our children has hopes and dreams for their future. Help them get there. Become a mentor. I'm George D. Tuck III, CEO of Tallview Palladium Incorporated, located in Dayton, Ohio. Actually, we started out with Lakeview Palladium, uh, which was my dad's company in uh, the early 60s, um, which was in the ballroom rental and the trucking industry. Uh, so consequently, we've had some strenuous problems in the past in trying to get in this market. Um, it's not always what you know, it's who you know also. Be willing to spend a lot of time at your, <laughs> in, in your business. Um, it would be knowledgeable to know something about uh, the mechanics of uh, trucks or, and mechanics of equipment. Um, one, obviously, to know when somebody is overcharging you or, or what have you. Um, you're going to need the knowledge of knowing who your market is, who, what, what your market is, who can you sell your product to. If you're able to, to have a mentor, which is very uncommon in this, this industry, um, people who are willing to show you the ropes, the more the better. Uh, however, most of my knowledge came from the School of Hard Knocks, um, trial and error. I would like the community to know that, um, one, there's companies such as mine who are trying to better their own people. I commend the African American Chamber um, for their efforts. Does retirement have to wait until my 70s? He's a great college for our kids. Out of the question? Is the American dream? Out of our reach? Not if we can help it. We're the National Endowment for Financial Education, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping people just like you get smart about their money. Log on to smartaboutmoney.org today and start taking control of your financial life. Hello, my name is Dr. Craig High. I am the pastor of Bethesda Temple Apostolic Church here in the city of Dayton. Our mission is very simple. It is to enrich the lives of our members as well as to create or make a positive impact upon our community and all of this for the cause of Christ. Bethesda Temple is not just a Sunday morning and Wednesday evening worship institution. With that in mind, we have entered in on many community projects. We are a disaster shelter for the American Red Cross as well as for the Mary Scott Nursing Home. We have a community basketball program here. We have partnered with uh, businesses uh, before we partner with WRCX uh, every holiday season uh, 
Thanksgiving and Christmas to give away hams and turkeys. Uh, so we have partnered with uh, businesses. Again, we partnered with Miami Valley Hospital. We ran a teen summit, as a matter of fact, just a couple of weeks ago here, where we had over 300 uh, young people on our campus. Uh, 30 colleges were represented. All of this uh, so that we can help our community, where we are partnering by offering uh, facilities at below market value for businesses uh, here in the community, African-American businesses. Uh, just across our parking lot, there are seven buildings and just about all of them are filled and busy with African-American businesses. In closing, I would just like to uh, thank uh, President Stocks as well as all of the members of the Greater Dayton African American Chamber of Commerce for this wonderful recognition. And uh, we want you to know that we are always available to help because we love Dayton. It is one of our greatest concerns and we are here to be a blessing to Dayton. My name is Richard Washington, and this is My American Story. I see a great need in my community. I live in Harlem, and I watch the children as they go along. I see a lot of issues that they have to deal with. I work with children who are on probation, and that's the population that I'm interested in focusing on because I think there's a great need for them to have someone in their corner. I think retired people have a lot to offer because we have life experience, we have work experience, very often we've raised our children already, and so we have those insights that we can bring to the table, and we have the flexibility of working in an area that we choose. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Help us continue to make a difference in the life of our nation. Go to serve.gov and find the opportunity that works for you. This message is brought to you by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Hey, hi, my name is Al Vereen, no initial N, but it stands for Nathoa and last name Owens, and I always spell it O-W-E-N with an S. When I was a probation officer in Montgomery County Juvenile Court. When I would write these histories, the history would end up in the chambers with these men that were going to chambers with the judge. And I would be sitting outside the door on a bench. And so it came to a point where I would ask, I would say, who are those guys going back there behind the door with the judge? And when I was told that they were lawyers, <laughs> I thought, oh, that is where I want to be, back behind those doors. And primarily, in my having practiced for 35 years, and it's hard to believe that we only had one female practitioner that was practicing law. Uh, we did have some few women in the community, in all fairness, that were in the courts, but as far as being in the business of practicing law, putting out your shingles, and making a living as a lawyer, that was Mary Kay Soder who graduated a year before I did from the University of Dayton, and then there came me. I think in life, uh, the most important characteristic or trait is reputation. Delish Cafe at 139 North Main Street, downtown Dayton. We've been here almost two years now. In December um, will be our two-year anniversary. Um, we serve a little bit of Southern, Cajun, Creole, you know, kind of eclectic menu. 
Um, there's pretty much something on the menu for everybody. Opened up in the winter time. On top of that, um, during holiday season. So, uh, but I mean, after they took, even during the scaffolding, we had a lot of support from our building people, um, the people that were in the Barclay. They came down and ate lunch, and then a couple of the places down here. And it was a little slow at first. You know, we started just serving lunch. And then we eventually implemented dinner. I have uh, a lot of friends that I've met through this business who don't per se like formally, like, you know, mentor me, but just through our friendships and, um, you know, talking, conversations, things like that, you know, they they give me really good advice. Yeah, but you know, initially opening up, it was just, we were kind of just in the blind, you know, feeling ourselves away, like, hey, let's just try to do this. And we just had this mentality that we did not want to give up, you know, even though it's something that, you know, you may not be familiar with and you may not have all the help that you need, you know, there's others help, you know, that comes from your friends and your family and, you know, it just kind of works itself out when you keep pushing and saying, like, I'm not going to give up. My name is Tamara Anthony, and this is my American story. I am a St. Louis AmeriCorps member on the education team. I tutor at elementary schools. Her name is Janiah, and when I met her, she was five years old, and she knew three letters, J, X, B. This kid is wonderful. Her spirit is just, just radiating. She's just awesome. But how did she slip through the cracks? And I just started working with her. And by the end of the year, Janiah was reading like a pro. It is my life's purpose to serve. If you're not helping somebody else, you're doing a huge disservice to the rest of the universe. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Help us continue to make a difference in the life of our nation. Go to serve.gov and find the opportunity that works for you. This message is brought to you by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Good evening. I'm Linda Hoffman, Community Affairs Manager from Vectrin. Vectrin's mission is to be the industry leader in helping our customers manage their energy costs. We also want to be best in class for safety performance and customer service and productivity. The foundation seeks to be a catalyst in the communities that we serve. What we want to do is take ordinary situations and turn them into extraordinary outcomes. We want to provide a long-lasting, long-term effect for our communities. I would like to thank the Dayton African American Chamber of Commerce for bestowing this honor on us tonight. We do what we do because it's the right thing to do. We want to give back to the communities that we live and work in. But to be recognized for providing outstanding service for the employment services that we afford to our employees and also by our volunteering and philanthropic services in the community. Uh, it, it, I want to thank you more than I can say. It really is a wonderful thing. Thank you very much. It is so easy to give back. I don't have a lot of money to help people, but I do have something. I have time. Get up and do something. Just imagine how strong a society we could be. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Help us continue to make a difference in the life of our nation. Go to serve.gov and find the opportunity that works for you. And this message is brought to you by the Corporation for National and Community Service. I've always sort of in the back of my mind, even, even as a child, wanting to be in the business. And uh, I found that uh, my niche was sort of around the communications field, starting out as a photographer and, and having to be involved in a lot of things that, that had a communications background. 
uh, over the years. So um, going to school and learning some of the craft of communication sort of drove me in that direction. There are a lot of challenges. Um, you know, I, I've been in business for 40 years, and over the years, a lot of things have changed, particularly as it relates to being a small African-American business person. Um, it Many times it depends on what the climate is at that time, whether or not you're going to get an opportunity to do various kinds of things. So there are always challenges on whether or not you can uh, fit the, the particular mold that uh, that happens to exist at that time. But, uh, when I was uh, started in business, I was 24 years old. And I remember a lot was happening during that time. The Model City era was, was, was moving pretty fast. And... Uh, you began to see people who you had never seen uh, getting into so-called the loop of things. They were in government, some were in business, opportunities were being created for minority businesses and things of that nature. So a lot of things were happening during the 70s and uh, during the late 60s, 70s and early 80s that we really just don't see right now. The community fabric has changed a lot. We've gone through the affirmative action period. We've gone through the conscious driven period. We've gone through a lot of different periods which all affect um, people like myself, business people who who are trying to be a part of the mainstream of business. Mentors. Now I've had uh, uh, certain people who I felt close enough to to go to and talk about issues uh, who sort of inspired me from afar. People like the late Clarence Bowman, people like uh, Lorenzo Harris, uh, you know, people like that who have been people that I look at as sort of my heroes as far as business is concerned. If, if I have nothing else, I am the kind of person who just don't quit. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a, a beaver. I keep going back trying to find that hole to climb through. And uh, for over 40 years, I've done that. And I think that's if I had to advise any young person who was looking at uh, entrepreneurship as a lifelong career, it would be that uh, they should uh, have in their mind that they're going to finish the journey, irregardless of what it takes. Um, when I started this company, um, I just had a love to do it. I tried to get jobs at other TV stations uh, for production, and um, I didn't get the opportunities to shoot the good stuff, though, so to speak. If there was a shooting going on in um, the Soda Bass or someplace like that, they'd give you a camera and send you out to go to cover that. But the creative stuff, the stuff I thought meant something. Um, you know, you never got an opportunity to do that. So my goal was to start my own and then be able to give other African Americans the opportunity to work in this industry and be respected in this industry. The main thing is um, making sure that you start with enough capital and maintain your cash flow throughout the lifetime of the business. That's very difficult for African-American companies, and especially small companies. Um, if you start off right, I think you have a great opportunity to succeed long term. Is making sure that you surround yourself with the right people, creative people, people that are dedicated, and people that have a love to do what it is that you're trying to do. I think mentorship is one of the most important things that any small business or medium-sized business 
can have. Having a good mentor will allow you, hopefully, not to fall into the pit holes that are very easy to fall into when you're starting a new business or any kind of a business. Uh, it's, it's, that, it's that other ear, that guidance that says, hey, it's time to go right or left, and somebody that can help you choose which way to go. Mm -hmm.